was coming through a man, coming through Paul, but they wanted to know. So they began to take what Paul said and search the scriptures to find out, is this really true? And they come to the conclusion that it was true because in verse 12 it says, Therefore many of the Bereans believed. Why did they believe? They received Paul's word with readiness of mind. They received the word with readiness of mind. They didn't say, well, I don't believe that. That's just Paul. Oh, that's just Jerry, or that's just so-and-so. No, see, they didn't have that attitude. They had a attitude, okay, this is Paul speaking, or this is Jerry speaking, or this is Virgil speaking, or this is a, that's good, okay, I see that's truth. They're speaking truth. Now let me go to the scriptures and verify it. The Bereans verified. And once they verified it, verse 12 says, Therefore many believe. If you have a problem with unbelief in your life, you can't trust the Word of God. You can't believe the Word of God. There's a mistrust of the Word of God because you're just hearing it from me or someone else and you're not going to the Scriptures daily to prove it to yourself. Prove it for yourself in the Word of God. If you lack that part of it, you have a mistrust of it. Because you're merely hearing what I say or what some other preacher says or what your previous church says or religion says. They went to the Scriptures and they searched it out in the Scriptures, in the Word of God. And therefore, they believe, many of them believed, it says. So if you're having a problem with unbelief, believing the Word of God, or believing what I'm saying, or what the promises of the Word of God, whatever they may be, is because you're not searching it out in the Scriptures daily. You haven't gone to the Word of God and searched it out for yourself. Therefore, you have a problem with unbelief. But you shouldn't. You see, God doesn't make you stick your nose in the Word. God doesn't make you open up your Bible and read the Bible. He wants you to freely choose to search the Scriptures. It's your choice. Amen. God doesn't make you do it. God's a gentleman. He loves you. He's kind. He will inspire you. He will minister to you. He will encourage you like today through me, to open up your Bible and get in there and find out if these things are true. Once you do that, you will believe. Amen. You won't have a problem with unbelief. Second, that's that. Amen. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God. See, God is all ready from, one, from His perspective, perspective. If you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've been born again, He has already received you. He loves you. Amen? His love is towards you. Amen? And you receive that. God is not displeased with you. God is not upset with you based on your performance. But on the same token, from your perspective, not to earn God's love, not to earn God's approval, but here in 2 Timothy 2.15, it says that you should study to show yourself approved unto God. Now, does that mean God disproves of you? No, it says that once God approves of you, because you've accepted His Son, because you received the righteousness which is of Jesus Christ in your life, because you're going to walk by faith, the faith in Jesus Christ, that what He did... His atoning work, that His sacrifice was sufficient to appease the wrath of God in your life. But because of that, from His perspective, but from your perspective, you're going to study verse 2, because 2 Timothy 2.15, you're going to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. From your perspective, if you don't study the Bible, it doesn't mean God, God doesn't disapprove of you. God is not displeased with you. But the same token is, don't you want to know what Jesus says? Don't you want to know more about His love for you? Don't you know more about, want to know more about the promises of God? God what God has promised you? 
Amen. How you're to live your life now that you've been saved, born again, that you've been, that Jesus Christ's righteousness has been de deposited into your life and your account, leaving, removing the wrath of God from your life. Don't you want to know what His righteousness is so that you can walk in it? Amen. Don't you want to know about the blessings God has for you? You find that by studying to show yourself approved unto God. You're a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? You see, you don't. it says study to show thyself approved unto God. From your side, it's a benefit for you. It, it will, uh, I'll say, appease your conscience. Amen? If you're studying the Word of God. If you're rightly dividing the Word of God. And you need to study because you want to, for yourself, write it. I can rightly divide the Word of God for myself. I'm up here preaching today because I've rightly divided the Word of God. I'm showing you from my experience, from the Word of God, my study in the Word of God, how I have applied it in my life, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. I am sharing that with you today. But that doesn't, that merely enlightens you. It, 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 it's a, it shines a light here. Go this direction. But you have to take and rightly divide the Word of God. You have to take that and apply it to your life. I can't do that for you. I can merely tell you. And it's not that you're trying to make, uh, from God's side, He's already approves of you and loves you, even if you don't study His Word. But on the same token, don't you want to know more about His love? Don't you want to know what Jesus did for you? The Word tells us what Jesus did for us. The Word lays out the plan and purpose, amen? So it tells you how much God loves you. If you have a problem with, with unbelief, it's because, go back up to the other verse we said, you're not studying the Word. You're not feasting on the Word of God, because the Word of God, it says, we live by the Word. Hallelujah. See, God loves you. He loves you regardless and as approves of you based on Jesus Christ's righteousness, the working, the work and the atonement of Jesus Christ. That set us free, that we could choose, amen, to study the Word. That we could choose whether to spend all my time on ESPN or watching video games, playing video games. I have the right to choose. He set me free. Before being born again, I could choose nothing but that. To please myself. To walk according to my own purpose and ways. And, but He saved us, amen. He set us free from that so that we would willingly choose to love Him. Choose to study His Word. Choose to want to know what the Word of God says. What God has revealed. It's His love letter. You want to know the love letter? God's love for you? It's right here in the Word. You have a problem with the, with being secure with insecurity and fear of, of man and fear of what people think, it's because you're not grounded in the love of God. There's only one person, I'll say person, there's only one opinion that matters in my life, and that is God's opinion. If your opinion, and you say whatever you want to say, and if it isn't, you can have an opinion on me, and that's fine, I don't care. It may be good, it may be bad, it may be indifferent. But one thing that matters in my life is God's opinion. That makes me secure. I am secure in effect. Therefore, I am not insecure. I am not moved by fear. I am not moved by the fear of man. I am not moved by what other people say about me. Why? Because I am secure in the fact that no matter what, God loves me. And I minister this to my mind. I encourage myself. Let's go to... One more scripture I'm going to put at you today, and that's John 1, not John, Joshua 1, 8. This is the speaking to God, God speaking to Joshua, the word of the Lord that came to Joshua. Joshua was following one of the greatest men of the Old Testament, Moses, who was leading the people of God, who led them. God used him to deliver the Hebrews out of Egypt. And God used Moses to do many mighty works. How would you like to follow that act? <laughs> How would you like to be the next leader after Moses? Moses, you know, 
brought down the, the tablets of stone with the commandments of God. Moses, who, who uh, stretched out his rod over the, re the Red Sea, and the sea parted, and they crossed over to the other side. And when he got to the other side, he stretched forth his rod, and the sea closed in and killed all the Egyptians who were coming to kill them. How do you like that? <laughs> Follow that act. Uh, Joshua 1.8 says, the, this book of the law, this is what God told him. This is what God said would encourage Joshua to follow that, follow Joseph, or follow Moses. This is what, that would, what encouraged, God said would encourage him, would, what would give him strength. It's Joshua 1.8, this book of the law, we could say the word of God, Joshua 1.8, the word of God shall not depart from your mouth, so he should speak it to himself. Do you speak the word of God to yourself, over yourself, over your family? Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God over your situation, over your circumstance. Speak the word of God. Speak it forth. Speak what God says. Well, that means you've got to know what it says, amen? You've got to spend some time in the word. To quote the word, what did Jesus use against the devil when the devil came to test him, tempt him, and try him? The word of God. Go read it, Matthew 4, 4. Jesus used the word of God against the tempter, against the devil, against the temptation. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. The devil would come and say, and he would say, it is written, Satan, it is written. He would speak the word. Speak the word. What was he saying here? Joshua 1, 8, Joshua he said, the word of God shall not depart from your mouth. Speak the word. Speak the word over your situation. Speak the word to your finances. Speak the word of victory, hallelujah, which is the word of God, to your healing, to your body, to your circumstances. See, it's not circumstances that, like I said, that dictate victory or defeat. It's the word of God that you speak to those circumstances, that you live through those circumstances that brings you victory. Not just words of your mouth, but that's part of it. Words of your mouth, you've got to believe it in your heart. You've got to apply that word in the circumstances in the word of God manifest, reveals the victory of God, the victory of Christ through that situation. But he said here, that the word of God shall not depart from out of your mouth, but you shall meditate it, meditate in it day and night. Day and night. What is it to meditate? It's to think about it. Roll it over in your mind, mull it over the word of God. It's not enough just to take your daily devotion and read the scripture and say, but daily devotion is good. You should at least spend some time in the word of God. To encourage you, but you've got to get it on the inside. How do you get the bread on the inside? Amen. Do you just look at that peanut butter and jelly sandwich sitting on the counter? <laughs> no, you get it on the inside. What does it mean to get it on the inside? You open your mouth, you take a bite, and you chew. And that's the same way it is with the Word of God. Open your mouth, put it in, chew on it. What does it mean to chew on it? It means to roll it over in your brain. Roll it over, roll it over in your meditation, in your thoughts, in your mind. Roll it over, look at it, examine it from all these different ways. Chew on it, chew on it, chew on it. And then it drops down into your belly and you digest it and your tummy works on it and works on it and converts that bread, that peanut butter and jelly sandwich into energy which provides life for your body to, to continue living. Amen? It's the same way with the Word of God. It is the Word of God. You chew on it. You chew on it. You think about it. You think about it. You meditate upon it. You roll it over, over and over and over in your brain. This is what he's telling Joshua to do. And we'll go on and what it. Joshua, this is what you need to do. Speak it. Meditate upon it. Think about it. Give it time to get from your head down into your heart. You see, the one thing to just know the Word of God, to be able to quote the Word of God. See, I can quote the Word of God. That's the beginning of it, to read it. But you have to take it one step further. You've got to get it to work in your life. You have to roll it over. You have to meditate. You have to think upon it. Amen? Chew upon it. Digest it. Get it working in your life. That's, how you, that's the beginning of it, is to think about it, to read it. To think and then to think about it, roll it over. How does this apply to my 